Good morning. How are you? It's so good to see you. We'll sing and be happy because we're all here together again. Good morning, boys and girls. Um, welcome to Wednesday. We're halfway through our week. Let's go ahead and take a look at our calendar and see what day we are on. What month are we? We are still in the month of May. We are going to count all the way down here to number 13. Are you ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oop, 13. <laughs> what does the 13 look like? A 1 and a 3. Now what does that 1 represent? A group of 10. And what does this 3 represent? three extra ones. Very good. How many days are in your week? Seven. Let's sing them. Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Seven days in your week, how many months in your year? Twelve, you ready? January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Excellent job. Now, you know we haven't done this in a while? Taking a look back at our calendar. Yesterday was Tuesday. What does Tuesday start with? T and T says t, t, t. Yesterday was Tuesday, so today is Wednesday. Wednesday starts with what letter? W and W says w, w, w. Yesterday was Tuesday, today is Wednesday, tomorrow will be Thursday. Thursday begins with what two letters together? T and H and T and H together says <sighs> Stick those tongues out. All right review our essential question. Our concept this week is natural resources and our essential question says how can things in nature be used to make new things? How can things in nature be used to make new things? Now we have talked about wheat can be used to make bread. Um, we talked about these oranges on the tree behind me can be used to make orange juice. Um, so let's take a look at our teacher book and um, see if they give us some other examples of things that can be found in nature but then used again, okay? All right, we've got a couple new vocabulary words that we're going to be listening up for. The first word is the word designs. Say designs. All right, here it is. Designs are patterns or shapes that decorate things such as plates, paper, and clothes. Look at the picture that shows the word designs. This design has circles with faces. I drew circle designs in my picture. All right, so your turn and talk question requires you to think a little bit. It's been a while, but they want to know what designs do you see in our classroom? So close your eyes, think about our classroom. Um, if mom and dad are in the room, grandma, wherever you're at today, um, turn and talk and talk about the different designs that we had in our classroom before we left. One of my favorite designs um, that we had up on our walls was all of your artwork. Um, we had your artwork up in um, on the, the windows, on your clips that had your names, um, on the wall for your table color. Do you remember we had each portion of the wall was a different color? Um, depending on what table you set up, we had pictures up there. Um, and you know what I miss? I miss our letter posters. Do you remember our letter posters? Like we would, Miss Ball would draw pictures of uh, different things that begin with each letter. Those were fun designs. All right, your next word is the word weave. Say weave. To weave 
means to lace together many strands of yarn into cloth, a blanket, or a rug. Look at the picture that shows the word weave. Look at all the different yarn colors used to weave this scarf. How many do you see? All right, and here's your turn and talk. It says, what would you like to weave to give as a gift? What would you like to weave to give as a gift? Turn and talk. All right, so if I could weave something, I think I would like to weave maybe, I don't know, a hat. I think if a, a hat, a woven hat would be fun, using yarn to make a hat. I wouldn't have to wear it too, too often in Florida, but I think it would be pretty. All right, and your last word for today is the word knowledge. Say knowledge. Knowledge is what you know about a topic from understanding or study. I gained knowledge about the moon from a science book. The child in this picture will know more about the moon after he finishes reading the book. All right, your turn and talk question is, what would you like to gain more knowledge about? What would you like to know about a topic? What would you like to have more knowledge about? I think I would like to have more knowledge of baking. Remember Miss Ball talked about baking and the bread and I have no idea how to do it. I would like to have more knowledge of baking. I think my kids would really like it if I learned how to bake and baked them some more things that didn't come out of a box. All right, so we have a new read aloud today called, let me get my title out here dog's playing with her tennis ball. I apologize. All right, so the name of this story is called Spider Woman Teaches the Navajo. All right, um, Spider Woman Teaches the Navajo is a tale, um, and a tale is a story that's been passed down from generation to generation, um, and this tale is from the Navajo, which are a group of Native Americans, okay? All right, I think Miss Ball has some bugs in her shoes. That's what I'm working on here. Sorry. All right, Spider Woman teaches the Navajo. All right, something we're going to think about while we're reading. It says, how did Spider Woman teach the girl that things in nature can be used to make new things? So think about how Spider Woman teaches the girl, okay? Here we go. One day... Long ago, a young girl walked to Spider Rock. Many people told a legend that Spider Woman lived nearby. Suddenly, the girl heard a soft voice calling. She looked all around, but she did not see anyone. Then a soft voice called again. It seemed to be coming from inside the earth. When the girl looked down, she saw the ground had split open. There was a tiny crack in the earth. She was curious, so she peeked into the crack. Below the crack, the girl saw a small room. There were rugs hanging on all the walls. The rugs were woven with wonderful bright colors and had beautiful designs. What beautiful rugs, exclaimed the girl as she looked down into the room. Spider Woman looked up at the girl. Come in, child, she said. Suddenly, the girl found herself in Spider Woman's room. Can I learn to weave rugs like these? asked the girl. Will you teach me how to create them? I will teach you to create rugs if you agree to just one thing, said Spider Woman. You must go out into the world and teach Navajo women how to weave. I will, agreed the girl. So Spider Woman began the first lesson right away. The girl listened closely. First, the girl learned that the materials for the rugs were natural resources. 
The colors come from the earth, exclaimed Spider Woman. White comes from shells, and blue comes from turquoise, and many more colors can be made from plants. Spider Woman taught the girl how to make each beautiful color. Next, the girl learned about the loom, which is a weaving machine. My husband, Spider Man, made this loom for me, said Spider Woman. The bar across the top stands for the sky, and the bottom bar stands for the earth. My loom is made of the sun's rays, the lightning, and the rain. Spider Woman taught the girl how to use the loom. Finally, the girl learned about the designs. The designs come from the earth and the sky, explained Spider Woman. When I weave, I think about the clouds. I remember the flash of lightning when it rains. I dream of sunbeams on sunny days. And I remember the beauty of the mountains standing against the sky. Spider Woman continued with a warning. You must never draw your design on paper, she said. Close your eyes and imagine the design in your mind. Let the weaving come from your heart. Spider Woman taught the girl how to make the designs, and the girl promised to listen to her heart. The girl was almost ready to begin weaving, but first Spider Woman shared one last piece of knowledge. The edge of the rug must have one small break in its design, she said. It can be as simple as a light color woven into a dark background. This opening is called the energy pathway. It is how the energy of the weaver escapes from the rug. If you do not leave the opening, your energy will be trapped inside the rug. You will not be able to create any more beautiful rugs. So the girl began to weave. She wove rugs and blankets with lovely colors and designs. After a lot of hard work, she became a very good weaver. Then she left Spider Woman. She kept her promise to teach Navajo women to weave. The girl became known as the Weaving Woman. For the rest of her life, she traveled and taught the Navajo women to weave. And that's why, to this day, the Navajo still weave their beautiful rugs and blankets for all people to enjoy. All right. What a fun story. So Spider Woman said that she used natural resources um, to create the colors uh, for her yarn to create different things. All right, let's jump in here and do some reading with our long O sound. I'm going to use my dry erase board. I'm gonna write some words down and you are going to sound them out. Remember, with our long vowels, it has to have that helper E at the end, okay? Ready? Robe. Robe. What's the word? Robe. When it has that helper E, the vowel changes its sound. It goes from short to long. Okay? the word? Pose. Strike a pose. Strike your best pose. How was that? Did you strike a pose? Or was I just silly by myself? Pose. Alright, you ready? Alright, so look at this word. It does not have a helper E on the end. So that O is going to be short. So what word is this? Up, hop. Now, what happens when I add that helper E? The first one does the talking, the second one does the walking. Ready? Hope. Hope. What's the word? Hope. Good. Do a few more. Own. Own. 
what's the word? Zone. Good. All right. One more. Let's do another where I don't have that helper E. What's this word? You know this word. Not. Not. Now what happens when I give that O his helper? Note. Note. Very good. All right. I'm going to do a few more for you guys, um, except this time you're going to write them down. Um, so if you don't have a piece of paper or pencil in front of you, go ahead and hit pause. Go ahead and grab that. Um, and I'm going to read a few words and you're going to write them down. Okay? All right. You ready? Miss Ball was working in the yard earlier, um, pulling up weeds and stuff, and so I'm really itchy because I think I got some dirt in my shirt. Dirt in my shirt. Dirt shirt. They both say, "ert." Uh, so I'm a little itchy. So I'm sorry if that's distracting. Okay, are we ready to do some long O words? All right, your first word is the word. Doze. I'm sleepy. I think I'm going to take a doze. D. O. Z. Doze. All right. What you got? Show it to me. D. O. Z. E. Good. Don't forget that helper E on the end because if you don't, then it says Dawes and Dawes is not a word. All right. Next one. Bone. B. O. N. Bone. All right. B. O. N. B. O. N E. Good. All right. Next one. Cone. C O N. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a C. C O N C O N E. Very good. All right. Let's do one more. I'm going to trick you. It's my favorite. You ready? Drove. 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 There's two letters in that beginning. Make sure you get both. Drove. Ready? Drove. D. R O V E. Very good. Drove. Drove. Okay. Quick peek at our sight words for this week. Look. Look at the sky. It's a beautiful day. Look. And then, where? Where? Where are all my friends? Where? All right, so we are going to do a couple things real quick. Um, so today is Wednesday, and that's the day that I like for you guys to do your draw the words and draw the sentences. Um, choose six words you haven't chosen yet. There should be plenty of words to choose from. Um, draw six words, write six words, and draw six pictures, and then draw, or I'm sorry, pick two sentences and draw those pictures as well, okay? So, today's the day where I want you to do this. All right, the next page should be, nope, not that one, this one here, okay, should be this page. All right, and you are going to color the pictures that shows a food made from grain. Now remember, grain makes things that are bread-like, that are bread-like. Um, so, 
it's hard to explain one of those, but okay. Um, so on the top row, you have toast, a muffin, and eggs. All right, in the next row, you have an apple, spaghetti, and pancakes. And then at the bottom, you've got a sandwich, cereal, and a ham. If you're not sure, uh, that's a good conversation for your, you and your parents. Uh, you can go peek in your pantry. Um, and if you look at the ingredients, I bet on a lot of these, if you have some of these things, um, one of the first ingredients is going to say whole grain wheat. So go check that out. Next on the back, you are going to be sounding out these sentences, tracing them, and then writing them on your own. Now, if you look at the end of both of those sentences, there is two long O words. Um, you see the little helper E at the end? Uh, make sure you sound those out with the long O sound. Okay, the last thing I want to do today, remember yesterday I told you I had a book for you guys that I wanted to read. It's called One Green Apple. Now, I'm going to read the little um, description of the book. Remember, whenever we have books with jackets, um, the jacket is the protective covering. Um, the description will be on the inside cover. Um, otherwise, they will be printed on the back. Okay? So let me go ahead and read you the description of this story, and then um, we'll take a listen to it. Okay? Farah feels alone even when surrounded by her classmates. She listens and nods, but she doesn't speak. It's hard being the new kid in school, especially when you're from another country and you don't know the language. Then, on a field trip to an apple orchard, Farah discovers there are lots of things that sound the same as they did at home, from dogs crunching their food to the ripple of friendly laughter. Ted Lewin's gorgeous, sun-drenched paintings and Eve Bunting's sensitive text immediately puts the reader into another child's shoes in this touching story of a young Muslim immigrant. Okay? All right. So, here we go. The author of this story is Eve Bunting, and the illustrator is Ted Lewin. This is my second day in the new school in the new country. There are to be no lessons today because we are going somewhere. Other days will not be like this one. Tomorrow I will go again to the class where I will learn to speak English. Mothers drive us to the start of an orchard where a hay wagon is waiting. We climb on and lean against the bundles of hay. The wagon is pulled by a tractor and we jolt along. I think it odd to have boys and girls sit together it was not like this in my village. The students know each other, but they don't know me, and I don't know them. I can't understand them when they speak, and I can't speak to them. Some are friendly, but some look at me coldly and smile cruel smiles. I hear my country mentioned not fondly. I would prefer to go home. My father has explained to me that we are not always liked here. Our home country and our new one have had difficulties, he says, but it will be good for us here in time. How much time, I wonder. I am different, too, in other ways. My jeans and t-shirt look like theirs, but my dupata covers my head and shoulders. I have not seen anyone else wear a dupata, though all the girls and women in my home country do. The girl who sits next to me smiles and points to herself. Anna, she says. She points to me, Farah. I nod and say, Farah, which is my name. Then I look across the field where cows graze. I am tight inside myself. Three dogs come and run in front of us. I think they belong here and know the way. I once had a dog called Haddis.
we stop at a place where apple trees bunch together, I find out we are to pick the fruit. Old apples have fallen in the grass. The three dogs are eating them. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Their crunches sound like haddises. Our, teachers, our teacher gathers us around her. She talks to the class. Then she looks at me in a kind way. One, she says. She touches an apple, then picks it. One, she says again. I am to take only one, as the other students have done. I nod. I want to say, I understand. It's not that I am stupid. It is just that I am lost in this new place. But I don't know how to tell her. I pull away from the rest. Beside me is a tree, shorter than the others, that does not seem to belong. It is small and alone, like me. A few hard green apples hang from its branches. I twist one off. It fits perfectly in my hand. We hold our apples and run and slide down a hill. The dogs race ahead. Their ears blow backward, inside out, pink and shiny. At the bottom of the hill is a little crooked house made of wood. I wonder if a cow lives in it, or a goat. Perhaps it is the home of a shepherd. In the house is a wooden machine with a metal handle. I see no cow or goat or shepherd. The house is here for some other reason. Our teacher lines us up. One by one, we plop our apples into the machine. I will be last to drop my small green one. My teacher seems about to speak. Then she shrugs and smiles. A boy shouts, hey! He moves toward me as if to stop me from putting in my little green apple, but he is too late. It has already gone. There are blades inside the machine that chop the apples. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. The students begin to push on the handle that presses the chopped apples. The skin and the pulp stay in the bag while the juice flows through. I hang back, not sure if I should be with the others. Pushing the handle must be hard. They keep leaning against it and grunt. I am strong. I can help. I take a step toward them. Anna calls and waves to me to come beside her. A boy makes a place for me on the handle between them. I am pleased. We push and push. It is hard, but we are working together. And we can do it. The juice drips down. Drip, drip, drip. Our teacher has brought paper cups. We line up again, fill them, and drink. We lick our lips. I think I taste my special apple. Apple cider, Anna says. That must be what we are drinking. I say the word inside myself where it can't be heard. Apple. The other word is too difficult. Our teacher is speaking. She is holding out a bag for our cups and making signs that we must get ready to leave. Anna sits next to me in the wagon as we ride back. There is a boy on my other side. Jim, he says, and points at himself. I nod. Jim, I say silently. Hay tickles my arms and makes Anna sneeze. It smells of dry sunshine. Jim pats his stomach, and a belch jumps through his throat. Everyone laughs. I do, too. Laughs sound the same as at home. 
just the same. So do sneezes and belches and lots of things. It is the words that are strange. But soon I will know their words. I will blend with the others the way my apple blended with the cider. I take a deep breath. Apple, I say. Anna claps. I smile and smile and smile. This, it is my first outside myself word. There will be more. The end. Now, couple reasons I wanted to read that book to you guys. Um, the first is they're using natural resources to make a drink, right? They're using uh, apples to make apple cider. The second reason I wanted to read that book is because if we were still in school and we were having our character development portion of the day, the word that I would be teaching you guys is the word tolerance, all right? So tolerance. Uh, she's from a different country. And it's, you know, it's her second day of school, and we speak a completely different language than what she's used to. Um, and so, you know, I think this is a lesson in being kind to the new kids, um, especially the new kids that don't speak English, because imagine how hard that must be for them. Um, going to a new school is scary enough. If you guys ever have to move, you know, it's kind of, it's not scary, but it, you know, you don't know anybody. You're nervous. Um, so imagine if you went to a new school in a completely different country where they didn't even speak English. How, how hard that must be. Um, and, I, and I think the point of the story is, like she said, um, her apple was different. Um, and she thinks she could taste it. But, I mean, at the end of the day, kids are all kids, right? Um... They just had a little language barrier. So keep that in mind uh, if we ever get any new kiddos at our school, especially new kiddos from new countries. Be the kind kid. Be Anna. Anna, you be Anna. Um, I can see Anna being that Anna. Super kind. Good friend, right? I could see all of you being that Anna. Um, so anyway, I hope you liked the book. I love that book. Um, and yeah, if we were still in school, we'd be talking about tolerance. And um, that was one of the stories I had chosen for us to read. And it just works out perfectly that it has to do with natural resources as well. All right. So you guys do your Your Turn practice pages, do your CVC word writing. And if it's your turn, your day to do your iReady, please do your iReady. You've got a teacher assigned long O lesson on iReady. That will be for a grade so scoot over there and get that done um and i will see you guys tomorrow i hope you have a great day i love you bye